Well, a very good day to you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Candy Talk here on Nahman Manjera's YouTube channel. Remember, this is Kenya's most comprehensive political and public governance analysis show. And of course, we've always vowed to keep you updated with all that is taking place within this country and across the borders. Of course, I'm joined here by Wakili Willi Socheno. Wakili, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Two years down the line, of course, during the administration of Kenya Kwanzaa, here we are. A lot of things are taking place. Kenyans are saying that... Uh, the two years have been rocked with the number of scandals therein, so to say, I wonder what you make of the same. But then I saw that at that time the clergy came forth and called for the resignation of the particular members of uh, the cabinet, of course, the heads of various ministries, especially talk of the Ministry of Agriculture, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Transport, all these are ministries that have actually... Uh, felt a little bit pinch of uh, the negatives that are actually happening in this country. Now the big question is here, now that all these things are taking place, do you think time is ripe for the government or rather the president to heed to the clergy's plea of perhaps reshuffling or making the uh, those who are responsible for these ministries resign? You know, <laughs> one thing I'd said uh, sometimes last year, Yes. garbage in, garbage, garbage out. out. Mm -hmm. What did you expect? of these ministers. I only sympathize with anybody who expects anything good. The reshuffle should have happened on the day they were appointed. Or even not reshuffle. Mm -hmm. Their sacking should have happened on the day they were all appointed. Okay. Because in terms of party's capacity and competency, which minister are you seeing here that is even showing any level of understanding of their ministry? Mm -hmm. Which ministry can you say is uh, showing some semblance of order. I used to think this one for environment was trying mm -hmm. until I saw the invasion, mm -hmm. the grabbing of uh, Ololua Forest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just here, right here in Nairobi and Gong. Mm -hmm. Somebody's time and fences, put a huge fence inside the forest mm -hmm. and they start felling trees and building mansions. And the ministry had been quiet. Only when now the residents go to demonstrate that they come out. I mean, it beats logic, the kind of cabinet we have here. Okay. But don't be so hard on the cabinet. Mm -hmm. The cabinet is just a reflection of the vision bearer. What's the vision that the vision bearer is running on? Maybe that's where the problem is. Mm -hmm. It can't be that all these cabinet ministers are that incompetent. Okay. And yet the person at the top is better. Maybe that's where the problem is. My community, we are fish eaters. Mm -hmm. And as we believe, when you want to confirm a rotten fish, mm -hmm. you don't look at the tail or the middle. Mm -hmm. Look at the head. Okay. Maybe that's where the problem is. We need to dissect it. Mm -hmm. But all these ministers, all they've cost us the last two years is pain. Mm -hmm. There's nobody who has done anything that you can say mm -hmm. is showing progress mm -hmm. towards improving the lives and welfare of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Let's begin with the Minister of Transport. Uh, this year is there, Kipchumba Mokomen says very well that uh, all these kind of uh, uh, deaths that we are witnessing in Grizzly Road carnages across the country should not actually be blamed on him because they've been there since uh, independence and we've been witnessing these things. And he says that uh, certain measures should actually be taken uh, into consideration without necessarily having to heap that blame on him. Do you buy that from uh, the You can't buy that. That's CS. bullshit. That is the careless talk. Uh, number one, mm -hmm. we have that ministry as the policy ministry. We know that the accidents can happen. And accidents have been happening. Okay. But what measures, what policy measures are you coming up with as a ministry mm -hmm. to reduce or to mitigate the dangers of accidents happening? Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. You know, in my forays in the Western world, mm -hmm. I noticed one thing, everywhere, especially on their roads, mm -hmm. they build their roads knowing fully well that accidents can happen. But you look at the design of a road, mm -hmm. the road furniture, the road paintings and markings on the road, mm -hmm. point towards that when that road was designed, the overriding consideration was not to provide a road for transport, mm -hmm. was to provide a safe, safety to use us. Mm -hmm. It's a conscious decision to design a road with safety measures in place. Mm -hmm. So what safety measures has Kipchumba Murkomen come up with? 
that guarantees a safe use of our roads, mm -hmm. that we can say the ministry has done all this. But maybe it's now the problem with the drivers. Mm -hmm. The ministry has done all its part. What has it done? The most they will do is to tell you that we will deploy a crackdown. Mm -hmm. Crackdown. First and foremost, how many policemen do we have in this country? What are the pressing issues to the police officers mm -hmm. or the police service in this country? That you think a crackdown on motor the vehicles, number one, you can't be everywhere at the same time. The sheer size of the country, the sheer numbers of road users, mm -hmm. the sheer number of vehicles, the police cannot be everywhere at the same time. Mm -hmm. So forget it, number one. Number two, even if you do the crackdown, we do it every day. Because the road usage is every day. Mm -hmm. People use those roads every single day and night. Even if you took all the policemen in this country and the army, everybody, to be all out there, mm -hmm. they will not do it every day. Because what will happen is this. They will now abandon all the other security mm -hmm. duties. Mm -hmm. You will be opening up another frontier of new challenges. Mm -hmm. So they will not do it. Okay. That is why a prudent leader mm -hmm. should design a safety mechanism mm -hmm. that guarantees safety on the roads. Mm -hmm. With minimal policing. Say minimal. Not maximum policing. Mm -hmm. So that look at the designs of the roads that we have. Just drive here. Anybody in any part of the country. Mm -hmm. Look at the quality of the roads. The standards of the roads that we have. Are they built with safety in mind? A road somewhere here in Kilimani was built the other day. Okay. Last year Recapitated, done, beautifully done. Today, it's like all of it has been washed away mm -hmm. by the water. It is now a portal. Mm -hmm. It's actually a crater all through. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody who doesn't know the contours of that road were driving even at a reasonable speed of 80, mm -hmm. that's an accident right there waiting to happen. Okay. It's not the question of the vehicle. The problem is that road. Mm -hmm. Go to the highways, where some of most of the things are happening. What we are calling highways, they are not highways. Mm -hmm. These are one-lane roads, where they build what was one side of a road mm -hmm. and divide it into two, and call it a highway. Mm -hmm. The only highway we have in this country, by the way, for your information, is this thicker road. Mm -hmm. That's the only highway. Maybe thicker road and the southern bypass, and some few bypasses that they are putting up. Mm -hmm. These are the things, Kizumu, Nairobi is not a highway. Okay. Nairobi Mombasa is not a highway. <laughs> Nairobi Eldora is not a highway. Those are single lane roads. <laughs> but the traffic that is using that road, that is highway traffic. No, no, understand <laughs> this. Okay, I understand. understand. This is a very important point you need to understand. <laughs> this is highway traffic that uses that road. <laughs> what have you done? You've taken highway capacity, put on a single road. What do you expect with poor markings? <laughs> Road barriers that you call bumps, when you should be putting speed limiters. Huh? There are no markings on those roads. What do you expect when an accident, why do you act surprised mm -hmm. when an accident happens and don't want to be blamed? The blame is squarely on you okay. as the policy maker. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I must say as I conclude this part, you know, People are not blaming the transport ministry for an accident happening. Mm -hmm. Now it's what we call the frequency. Mm -hmm. More and more users are coming on the road. And now we are seeing more and more accidents happening because of the conditions of those roads. In fact, I believe mm -hmm. when all is said and done, mm -hmm. you will notice if we were to do proper investigations of the causes of those accidents, mm -hmm. most of it will be on the question of the road itself. Okay. So, so, the vehicles. so you're saying here that the CS should actually be held responsible for that? Yes, held responsible. Okay, okay. See, as uh, Kipchumba Murkom in aside, um, the other CS was also, uh, whose resignation has been called for by the clergy, is uh, the agriculture CS, uh, uh, of course, Honorable Mithika Linturi, hearing actually pertaining to the kind of uh, scandal that we've witnessed 
with the uh, fake fertilizer stuff and mm. all that. Do, do, do you think that, uh, uh, of course, him quitting his job would be the right approach to solving the problem that we're witnessing in that ministry? Of course, if he's unable to run the ministry, mm. what is he doing there? Okay. If the kitchen is too hot, you cannot handle it, so you get out. Mm -hmm. That is the honorable thing to do. Does the fact that he actually first of all denied the existence of uh, the fake fertilizers here reveal anything to do with no, his suitability? The fact of yeah. denial, mm -hmm. the problem, forget about denying, mm -hmm. the fact that this thing happened okay. in his ministry, mm -hmm. that is what should cause him to resign. Not that the fact that he denied. Mm -hmm. No. The problem is not the denial. Okay. The problem is that his ministry is rolling out a fake fertilizer program. Mm -hmm and stealing money from Kenyans who are buying those fake fertilizers. That's what is happening here. Mm -hmm. That his ministry has superintended over theft at a high magnitude. Mm -hmm. One. Other countries that are functioning, mm -hmm. people resign for even just spending $10 to buy a chocolate, a bar of chocolate. Mm -hmm. People have resigned, ministers, have resigned on that alone. You, your ministry has gone out there. Mm -hmm. A ministry has sat down conceptual as an idea, to rob Kenyans mm -hmm. of their money in their pockets, in their homes. Mm -hmm. They are not satisfied the robbing they normally do at the national level, mm -hmm. behind the scenes. They are now coming direct to your house to rob you by selling you a fake product. Okay. That alone, he should resign. Mm -hmm. The fact of his denial was just a confirmation of his incompetence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just a confirmation, eh? corroboration, mm -hmm. that all that you hear about me is true. I denied. Then he comes around, and now they say they are going to do investigation mm -hmm. and take action. Shows further incompetence. Then the, the government spokesman talks about Sijui. They're doing soil composition mm -hmm. to those men to... Do you know, mm -hmm. when did they do soil testing? <laughs> yeah, what, where the soil testing had been done? Yeah. So and you, which compo components do they know that is required so you don't for a particular region? Maura's kind no, of no, no, no. <laughs> I'm a farmer. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I take my soil samples and take them for testing. The sample in Alego is different from the sample in Kisum. Mm -hmm. And the sample in Noma Bay and Bigori. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when we are told by the agronomist, they'll tell you now this one, the pH levels are different. Mm -hmm. You need to apply this type of foliar or fertilizer okay. to boost the pH levels. Mm -hmm. This one of theirs, which is a one-shop solution to all soils across the country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a con man. Mm -hmm. yeah. So on that basis, you're saying now of the scandal that we're witnessing therein, um, he also needs to... Also needs to well, well, well the, the, other, the, the other two ministers who also uh, been... Uh, at the receiving end, of course, at the minister, in, uh, the, the, the cabinet secretary in charge of uh, interior due to the uh, rampant uh, uh, banditry that we are witnessing in the north that has not actually ceased. And of course, finally, the uh, health CS, Susan Akumicha, because of what is taking place in the health ministry. What do you make of these two CSs? You see, for, for Kendiki to his, uh, in his favor, mm -hmm. at least he's trying. Mm -hmm. Maybe just not doing enough, but he's trying. You can see a minister. Mm -hmm who is trying to apply himself to what he needs to do. He's yeah. traveling all over the country, mm -hmm. uh, visiting some of these spots. But trying is not enough. Mm -hmm. Kenya has one result. Because those deaths are happening, mm -hmm. any death is one too many. can never be recovered. Okay. So he better get his act in order. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the demand for resignation will be well in order mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. Nakumicha, the less said about her, the better. Mm -hmm. She breeds incompetence mm -hmm. from day one. So, look at the handling of this. Does she understand? She came up with that nonsense of Suji, one government policy, mm -hmm. one government approach to suck her nose, yes. What is that now? Mm -hmm. She can't even understand the difference between a medical intern mm -hmm. and an intern. Okay. She doesn't understand the basics, things in her own ministry. Mm -hmm. So, what is she providing? She's lied. On her qualifications, mm -hmm. claiming to be a doctor when she's not, mm -hmm. claiming to have gone to a university that earned a degree mm -hmm. in a university in Turkey through an online program which is never provided, which, which does not be never been provided for mm -hmm. in that ministry. Mm -hmm. So why do you waste time with such a person, claiming to have registered for a master's program mm -hmm. which does not exist, mm -hmm. calling herself a doctor? 
which is a title that is earned through a known process, medical school, mm -hmm. or you've done a PhD. Mm -hmm. Claiming to be doing a PhD, a student of PhD, that is not offered at the university she's mm -hmm. asserting. Mm -hmm. What else do you need? What else do you need, Amaru? I mean, what has been provided in the public domain about her? Okay. The less say, mm -hmm. the better. Mm -hmm. Do you think that uh, uh, making these uh, actually heads of various ministries in this country face the axe is the best solution to the problems that we are of course, uh, facing as a country? Kenyans do not have the patience to wait mm -hmm. because their mistakes and their incompetence has dire consequences mm -hmm. on the people okay. and the state of the nation. Mm -hmm. So why should we, we are 50 million people, mm -hmm. why should four or five people hold us hostage? Okay. Yeah, and condemn us to this thing. And why should we baby them? Within the 50 million people, there are so many competent people that can do the job. These jobs have been done before. Okay. And we can gauge results from different holders. Mm -hmm. There are even more professionals in all those departments who can do it. Mm -hmm. Some even belong to UDA by there and Kenya Kwanza. We are not even saying give the jobs to the non-UDA members. Mm -hmm. Give it to your members. Because in the rank and file of UDA and Kenya Kwanza, mm -hmm. There are people who are qualified and competent who can do the job. Why not give them? All, right. all Kenyans are asking is just good services. Mm -hmm. That's all. Is that too much to ask? Mm -hmm. They're not even asking you to give them the jobs them to do it. They're just saying get the best people in your team eh? because they, are, they exist. Mm -hmm. I don't think that all UDA people are academically mm -hmm. dwarfed mm -hmm. or competently deficient, mm -hmm. competence deficient. Mm -hmm. You will find something. Do you then, do you then uh, he actually draw some sort of blame towards appointing an authority or whichever of course, method was of used course, to bring them of on course, board? Of course, the method that was used to bring them on board. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as I say, probably the pro maybe the problem is the top is mm -hmm. rotten. So you think that is what has brought us where we are? Yes. Mm -hmm. If that top cannot identify competent leaders, mm -hmm. then what, what, what does it say about him? Okay. Mm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is it from Wakili Willy Sotino here. Of course, the clergy have called for the resignation of uh, uh, some of these uh, cabinet secretaries whom we've just discussed here. Tell us what you think about this. Do you think by them resigning, then perhaps this would help us solve the kind of problems that we're witnessing as a country in these particular ministries? Allow me to stop this conversation at this particular moment. It was nice having you on board. And of course, if you're watching us for the first time, kindly subscribe to this channel. Till we have this conversation again, have yourself a lovely day. My name is Evans. Okay.